Winter, 1932, Paris, France. A single 9mm bullet shatters the silence of a luxury apartment. The man lying dead on the floor is none other than Ivar Kruger, known as the Match King. His death at the age of 52 marks the end of a saga that rocked the financial world. But who pulled the trigger? Was it a desperate investor seeking revenge? Or did Kruger himself, overwhelmed by his crumbling empire, choose to end his own game? And how is it that this story, so huge in its scale, remains a whisper in the annals of economic history, overshadowed by esoteric figures like Charles Ponzi and his relatively small scheme? And just for fun, what's the relation between Ivar Kruger to the nightmare guy, Freddy Kruger? <coughs> Stay with us till the end as we unravel the incredible story of the Match King. Let's go back in time to the late 19th century, to the Scandinavian cold of Northern Europe. Here in Kalmar, a small town on the southern shores of Sweden, begins a story that will one day grip the financial world, the story of Ivar Kruger. Ivar was born in 1880 into a humble family that was far from any financial glamour. His father ran a modest match factory to feed his family. Little did he know that his son Ivar would one day light up the world with matches, ambitions and illusions. Ivar's journey was fueled by relentless ambition and an incredible understanding of the business world. Even as a teenager, while his friends were ice skating on frozen lakes, Ivar was learning the principles of the match business. He often found counting the stock or observing production, his mind always ticking, always calculating. But our young hero wasn't pleased with just being a spectator in his father's factory. At the age of 16, his thirst for knowledge took him to Stockholm where he studied for master's degrees in both mechanical and civil engineering and graduated when he was only 20 years old. However, for a mind like Kruger's the academy was just a pit stop. His real education came from the business world where numbers spoke louder than words and he quickly learned that in the game of finance, the bold take it all. Ivar jumped into various ventures from construction to banking to many others. Each step was a calculated move on his business world chessboard. But it was back in the familiar world of matches where Ivar would make his first grand move. For him, matches weren't just flame generator sticks, but beacons of potential wealth waiting to be ignited across the globe. In the heart of Sweden, in the noisy workshops of a modest match factory, young Ivar began to stitch his dreams into the fabric of reality. Not yet the match king, but an eager apprentice in his father's factory. He saw beyond the smoke and the toil, envisioning a world connected by his matches. His first move was a bold consolidation of the Swedish match industry. He swallowed smaller competitors, acquiring them with a mix of charm and sharpness, building a monopoly right under the noses of the Swedish elite. Why should we stop in Sweden? There are millions of smokers around the world waiting to light with our matches. At this point, Kruger's gaze turned beyond Sweden and his spreading strategy was brilliant but extremely ambitious. He offered financial aid to struggling European countries following World War I. But Kruger's aid came with a small catch, exclusive rights to sell matches in these countries. What? Why would they agree? Hmm. Maybe because they didn't have much choice, most economies in Europe were severely damaged by the war and inflation rates skyrocketed, same as unemployment. The governments wanted to increase their spending to boost the economies and they needed to borrow money in any possible manner. Countries like Poland, Greece, France, Romania, and many more took loans from Kruger in return for exclusive rights of selling matches in their territories. In total, among around 15 countries, I'm speaking about an imaginary sum that was estimated at $387 million in 1930. Just to understand how crazy was that, in 2024, this sum will be equal to around $10 billion. Wow! Nation by nation, Kruger's empire expanded, turning the humble matchstick into a token of his burgeoning power. But such an empire needed money. A lot of money. Kruger looked to the stock market, his charisma and success wooing investors from across the globe. His companies issued bonds, promising lucrative returns. Here's where Kruger's financial alchemy came into play. He shuffled funds between his enterprises, using new investments to pay off older debts. It was a delicate dance, requiring constant expansion, new investors, and unwavering confidence in the market. By the roaring 1920s, Kruger was a financial colossus. 
He wasn't just a businessman, but a kingmaker, influencing governments with his loans and monopolies. From Stockholm to New York, his name opened doors, moved mountains of money, and wrote new rules in the global financial playbook. The 1920s was an era of jubilance and jazz. At these times, Ivar Kruger, the match king, stood as a titan of an industry whose empire's glow could be seen from Stockholm to Wall Street. Grand mansions, lavish parties, a life gilded in luxury, Kruger wasn't just rich, he was the image of success. Kruger had his sprawling mansion, its walls lined with exquisite art, floors echoing with the laughter of the elite. His parties were the talk of the town, where the clink of champagne glasses harmonized with the whispers of deals and secrets. To success, not just mine, but ours. In this room, gentlemen, we shape the future. In these gatherings, Kruger wasn't just a host, he was a maestro orchestrating a symphony of wealth and power. The Match King didn't just ignite matches, he sparked connections with the most shiny names of the 20s. From industrial magnates like Rockefeller to influential politicians, Kruger's circle was a roster of the era's most powerful. His influence was such that a single nod from him could sway market trends or shape political decisions. Publicly, Kruger was seen as a financial wizard. Newspapers lauded his business acumen, investors hung on his every word, hoping to glean secrets to his unmatched success. But beneath the glow of his public persona, Kruger was a riddle, wrapped in a mystery. To the world, he was a financial prophet, a beacon of modern capitalism. Yet, those who looked closer saw a man walking a tightrope over an abyss of his own making. As the 1920s gave way to the 30s, the world teetered on the edge of economic upheaval. And Kruger, the architect of a financial empire built on matches and mirages, would soon face the ultimate test. Would his empire withstand the tremors of the impending crisis, or would it go up in flames, like the very matches that built it? Please like and subscribe and let's find out. Please do, it is so simple to make us grateful, just press these two buttons and let's continue. Thank you. The Wall Street crash of 1929 sent shockwaves across the globe, heralding the beginning of the Great Depression. Markets tumbled, fortunes vanished, and the world plunged into economic turmoil. And in this chaos, the cracks in Kruger's empire began to widen. Governments, reeling from the economic downturn, struggled to repay Kruger's loans, squeezing the very lifeline of his empire. The Match King, once the master of financial chess, found himself a pawn in a game controlled by global economic forces. Don't worry, gentlemen. Our foundation is solid. The world needs our matches. But Kruger's confidence was nothing but great acting. Behind closed doors, the real Kruger was juggling numbers, moving funds desperately to keep the illusion alive. Kruger promised sky-high returns to his investors, sometimes over 20%. It was a dangerous game. With each promise, the gap between reality and illusion got bigger and bigger. Kruger was actually using money from new investors to pay dividends to the old ones. I know this tactic. This is exactly a Ponzi scheme. Yes. A Ponzi scheme, but on steroids. I will make sure to link you to our entertaining episode about Charles Ponzi at the end of the video. It's about time to know what stands behind the term Ponzi scheme, isn't it? Anyway, the collapse began with a whisper, rumors of forged bonds. Kruger had been selling fake Italian bonds to American investors, a desperate move to inject cash into his crumbling empire. The revelation sent shockwaves through the financial world. The Match King, once a symbol of infallible success, was now a harbinger of fraud. It's a temporary measure, just until things stabilize. They'll never find out. But they did. The financial detectives of Time magazine began to peel back the layers of Kruger's fraudulent empire, and what they found was staggering. Creative accounting, falsified documents, a labyrinth designed to confuse, mislead, and ultimately, deceive. The ferocious downfall of Ivar Kruger's empire wasn't just a scandal, it was a financial tsunami, and its waves were crashing far and wide. The revelation of $250 million in forged Italian bonds, which translates to around $5 billion in 2024, marked the beginning of an unraveling that shook the very foundations of international finance. But the forgeries were just the tip of the iceberg. Kruger's bold financial strategies had implicated not just private investors and companies, but entire nations. 
For instance, his total loans from Swedish banks amounted to half of Sweden's reserve currency. This astonishing figure had started to corrode the value of the Swedish currency on the international financial market, threatening the economic stability of his own homeland. Across the globe, from Stockholm to Wall Street, the shockwaves of Kroger's downfall were felt. His companies, once seen as fortresses of industrial power, saw their stock values plummet, erasing billions from the market. Banks faced insolvency, pension funds dried up, and countless individual investors, who had staked their futures on Kroger's promises, were left with nothing but despair. Kroger's empire's collapse was not just a tale of personal ruin, but a stark lesson in the fragility of financial trust. The Match King, whose name had once symbolized unrivaled success, was now synonymous with fraud, deception, and economic disaster. That's it for today. The story about the Match King is so vast, it could easily be a Netflix series. It wasn't easy for us to squeeze it into a 10-minute video. I hope you enjoyed the result. Ivar Kroger is top 10 in the annals of financial fraud, but surprisingly, not many heard about him, and to be honest, including myself. This saga deserves wider recognition, so let's start with sharing it with at least one friend who must have this information. Although three suicide letters were found, we will probably never know for certain who pulled the trigger in that Paris apartment. And as for the connection to Freddy Krueger, well, there isn't. A bit of deception on my side, but compared to Krueger's, I think I'm okay. If you like it, tell your friends. And if not, tell me. I'd truly appreciate it if you could subscribe, like, and share to support the channel, and mostly if you comment with your thoughts, ideas, fact corrections, and any other economic event from history that you'd like me to explore together with you. Economic Rhapsody. Thank you for watching. Talk to you soon.